Oh, hey guys, what's going on? It is your boy, Mr. Curry here, back at you with another chapter review question video here on my YouTube channel. If you have not done so already, make sure you guys like and subscribe to my channel uh, and push that bell thing because apparently that bell thing will notify you when I post a new video. Um, so, anyway. Uh, I had a lot of questions about my outfit last time, so I got my outfit on again. This is an authentic um, knight's, or not knight's, sorry, a king's outfit. I got this. This was handed down to me by my great, 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 who was a king in the Middle Ages, believe it or not. Uh, do you believe me? Anyway, <coughs> pardon me. Let's get started. Um, it is, uh, these questions are uh, located on page 377. Before I get started, I do want to mention mention that I hope you guys are doing well. Stay, staying healthy, washing your hands, staying inside, not going out, not, um, not uh, causing this virus to spread, doing your part to flatten the curve, um, as they say. Uh, I certainly am. Um, it's driving me a little stir crazy, but I'll do my part and we'll get back to school in no time. Hopefully. Questions are on 377 right here. Only six of them this week. This week or this video, which is good. A little bit less. Um, so let's jump right into it so this video is not 30 minutes like last one. All right. Question at number one. 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 Question number one. What is a thief? Straightforward question, straight from 371, page 371. You, know, It's even highlighted for you. Pretty simple. A vassal helped his lord in battle. In exchange the va for the vassal's uh, military service, a lord gave his vassal land. The property granted to the vassal is called a fief. Just like um, in Japan, when we studied Japan feudalism, this is the same stuff. You have a vassal and a lord. A lord controls the land. The lord needs an army. The vassal serves in said army in exchange for a piece of land. And we call that piece of land a fief. It is property granted to the vassal uh, in exchange for military service. Straightforward. That's question number one. Let's move straight to straight to. Question number two. Oh, wait, I got a picture. Sorry. Ah, I, I, yeah, I found this on Google. This is kind of an example of what a thief might look like. Uh, there are also other examples. You can just uh, go to the, the Google and search a uh, thief, and it will give you a good example. So anyway, question number. Ready for it? Two, 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 two. Question number two. It says question number two on 374 is where you can find... Uh, this information, it says draw a chart to show the major parts of the medieval manor. Simple. Well, this one's a little tough because if you're going to do this assignment on Google Docs, you might be like, mm, how do I do that? And you know what? That's a good, mm, mm, that's good. You know, how do you do that? You know what you can just do for me? Search the Google, find a picture like I did and include it. That's that That works for me. If you're doing it on a piece of paper, go ahead and draw it. Um, so, <clears throat> but you want to just make sure that your picture has a, let me get my pointer going. It has a castle here. Your manor, your medieval manor has to have a castle. And surrounding the castle, you need to have houses and maybe a workshop, a pasture with sheep. These are where the serfs lived. Then you have different fields and a, most, a water mill maybe. And most importantly, 
you had a church? Straightforward, that is question number two. Boom. Moving on to question number three. Three, 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 three. All right. What impact did the Code of Chivalry have on knights during the Middle Ages? I'm actually going to read this to you. Well, the first couple um, uh, paragraphs. You can read the rest. Hopefully you already did. So, dear, and this is found on 371. 371. Right here. Great. Oh my God, wrong way. There you go. Wrong. Okay. Right in this section. It says, during the Middle Ages, the nobles were the most powerful people in Europe. Great lords had more land and wealth than ordinary knights. Yet, a shared belief in a, the feudal order united lords and knights in defending their society. Knights followed a code of chivalry. The, these rules stated a knight must be brave and obey his lord. A knight was also required to respect women of noble birth, honor the church, and help people. You see, today's ideas about manners, you guys know about that. You know, when your parents tell you to have, you know, have good manners. You know, this is kind of where that came from, this code of chivalry. So what impact did the Code of Chivalry have on knights during the Middle Ages? It gave them a code to live by. Remember when we studied uh, the Japanese, we studied about the samurai. They had this thing called the, the Bushido. They would rather die than kind of uh, uh, betray this or dishonor their demio. So this is the same thing. Knights lived by the Code of Chivalry. It was their way of life. They would rather die than dishonor it. So it was their kind of their value system, how what they believed in, what kind of motivated them to live, and what, kind of what role they played. So however you guys can kind of word put that in your own words, go ahead. But it's, it was their, you know, what they lived by. However you can kind of, Write that that out. <clears throat> Make sure you can. So, anyway, that is question number three. I do believe that I have a picture here. Yes, I do. So you can go ahead and pause the video if you want to read the some this example of the code of chivalry, kind of what some of the rules that the knights live by. Uh, if you want to. But for the sake of this video, I am going to move on to question number four. Four. Question four. Four. That, that was eight, but, you know, two fours. Four. What explains the development of cities and towns during the Middle Ages? And I have to be honest with you guys. This, out of the six questions, is the most difficult question. This, this question is a, if my thing would work, is a cause and effect question. So you need to figure out what happened to these cities. What happened to them before this? And then what happened that changed it, that allowed these cities to develop? And what was the effect? So, I'm not going to read all of this to you. Again, sake of time, you guys should have already read this. And if you uh, forget reading this, go to 375 and 376 under the growth of towns and cities. And you can see all this information again. So, basically, what happened? The Rome, when the Roman Empire fell, you remember they had a system of roads. When it fell, these roads and bridges be, fell into disrepair. 
they fell into ruins. They started to ru be ruins. You know, you couldn't travel on them anymore. Tra so people lived in small communities. They didn't travel off and explore the great empire like they did during the Roman times. So these roads began to uh, break up, depreciate. They were not taken care of. However, um, there was a system in the 1100s, by the 1100s, 1100 AD, Europe had this feudal system in order, which nobles had control of all the land. And the nobles took responsibility for repairing and taking care of their land. And so when a noble control, noble John controlled this part of the land, he went around and he fixed all the roads. And so eventually over a couple hundred years, we saw um, these roads repaired, these bridges repaired, and travel exploded. People then were able to travel outside of their small communities and participate and trade. And so we saw trade increase because people were going from place to place, trading their goods, making more money. Ch -ch 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 -ching. Trade increased. And when trade increased, because of the increase in trade, we saw trading cities grow larger, especially trading centers. Wealthy, very wealthy trading centers uh, like Venice and Italy. Uh, built, they built ships there. Uh, and uh, other cities. There's a couple other examples of, uh, like Flanders. Um, you can read about it. So not only, well, as trade increased and as these cities became more wealthy, we saw the increase in government, or the population. People started to more people started to live there. And with more people, we saw the growth in government. So what explains the development of the cities and towns? Well, we have to start with the fall of the Roman Empire and the, sta the, the, you know, the situation they had. The roads were ruined. The bridges were ruined. But then feudalism, this feudal order, changed everything. Nobles took responsibility. They fixed up the roads. When the roads were fixed up, trade increased, population increased. We saw governments grow. So it all comes back to the introduction of feudalism to this area. It's what it lacked from the time the Roman Empire fell until 1100 AD. So do your best to put that into your own words if you want to go back and record uh, Listen to that again. It should help you fairly well. Now we're going to move on to question number five. Question five. So, if you were a person in business in medieval Europe, why would a membership in a guild be important to you? So, what did guilds do? is what you got to figure out. So if you're going to figure out why would you want to join the guild, you got to figure out what they do. So let's read this, this uh, three paragraphs. Trade encouraged town people's, trade encouraged townspeople to produce many different kinds of products. Craftsmen organized guilds or different business groups and each craft had their own guild. A guild controlled business in town and trade in that town. So guilds controlled business and trade in a town. The guild set the price for a product and or a service. They also set and enforced the standards of the quality of the product. In addition, guilds decided who can join a trade. An apprentice or trainee learned a trade from a master artisan who provided room and board at but no wages. After completing his trainings, training, the apprentice 
would become what's called a journeyman, who worked under a master for a daily wage. Cool. So, why would you want to join this? Well, if you, let's just say you made baskets, and you wanted to make money off of baskets, you would, you would, it would be in your best interest to be a part of this guild. In fact, you wouldn't be successful if you were not part of this guild. It was the guilds who controlled how much you could sell your product for. Or it was the guilds who set and enforced the standards of how the quality of your product. And so if you wanted to have a say in those setting the price or setting the quality, uh, the standard of quality, you had to be part of this guild. And so it just makes sense. If you are a business person in medieval Europe, why would membership in a guild be important to you? Be, it's, it's the most important thing because you would not be able to be successful because you would not be able to set the, have a say in setting the price or set uh, uh, setting the standard of quality. It's having a say in the, the standard of quality. Okay. Cool. That one's pretty straightforward. And we are going to now move on to question number six. Six, 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 six. All right. What new inventions allowed people in Western Europe to grow more food during the Middle Ages? And what was the result of increased food production? We get two questions in one, but this one is super straightforward. It's found on 374 and 375. Right here. You can see it. 374, and it continues on to this part right over here. <coughs> so I will read this to you, and we'll go over this. Manners usually uh, produce only enough food to support the peasants in the Lord's households. However, over time, Europeans developed new ways to increase the number of crops they could grow, as well as how much crops how much the crops produced. One major improvement was a heavy wheeled plow with an iron blade. The new plow made it made deeper cuts in the dense clay soil. The heavier plow plow meant peasant farmers uh, spent less time working in the fields. The horse uh, collar was another important invention. This collar enabled the horses to pull the plow. Horses could pull plows much faster than oxen could. This invention made it possible for the peasants to produce more food. Water and wind power also became important during the Middle Ages. Europe's rivers provided uh, uh, power for water mills to grind grain into flour. In places without rivers, windmills could be used to, for grinding grain, uh, pumping water, and sowing wood. Saw, sawing wood. Another improvement in agriculture was crop rotation. Peasants used these fields rather than uh, peasants used three fields rather than two to keep the soil fertile. One field was planted in the fall. The second field was planted in the springtime. Spring time. And the third field was left unplanted. With this system, only one third of the land was left un, uh, unused at the time, rather than one half. Crops could be grown as more, uh, more crops could be grown, and as a result of this food, the uh, food as food production increased, we saw. 
the population of Europe grow. So what inventions allowed uh, people in Western Europe to grow more food during the Middle Ages? Invention number one was a heavy wheeled plow with an iron blade. Invention number two was a horse collar. Horse collars made it, uh, horses could pull um, the plows fa faster than the oxen could. Number two was the use of wind power, windmills, and wind, uh, windmills and um, uh, uh, water mills to grind up grain. They used you know, they spun, and they used the flow of the water to spin it, and it, it then turned a grinder that grounded up the grain. Okay, and also the rotation of crops. Instead of having one on empty field and one field growing, they had they rotated it so they could grow more. Uh, if you want to go back and read it, make sure you guys read that, but that should give you a good answer to that. What was the result of increased food production? Pretty simple. As food production increased, the population of Europe grew. That, guys, is it. That's question number six. That is uh, the last question, and we are we are done. The last thing I want to make sure to remind you to do is subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys right back here um, later in the week. Have a good weekend if you're watching this on Friday. If not, whenever you're watching this, make sure you guys are washing your ha your hands. Taking it easy, keeping up with your work, and uh, reaching out to me if you have any questions. It's your boy, Mr. Curry. Take it easy. It's um, It has been real. It's been fun. I miss you. All right. Peace.